Good evening, and welcome to the Three Black Pratt Grads. My name is Kenneth Nelson. I'm here with my good friends, Mark Skinner and Greg Cleghorn. And we get together twice a week to discuss theories and ideas about photography. We're also graduates of the Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. Um, tonight's episode... Fine Art are... Photography Department. Fine Art, okay. <laughs> Today, in this episode, we're discussing the use of words in photographs. Uh, and I'll be honest, the reason why this came about is because earlier this week, uh, we were looking at a photographer who's well known for using words in photographs, Dwayne Michaels. And so this morning, I, I was supposed to come up with the idea a couple of days ago, but I just thought about it this morning. So I ra rushed and thinking, what could I do? What could I do? And this is what I came up with. So words with photographs. And so with that, I'm going to go and lead in and um, show you the particular image and the words I used. And what I will do is I will share the image and I will speak the words, but you will be able to see the words as well. Okay, so here we go. This is the image that I selected and the words I used were, I waited, waited. I couldn't wait anymore. So I left it there. That's a lot of words. It's it's a haiku, Mark, Greg. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Why did you tell me we were doing haiku? I could write haiku. Greg, because I said you can use any words, any amount. The length is up to you. <laughs> oh. There once was a woman from Exeter. So beautiful. No. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So what was it that they left? That's the point of the haiku. It's subjective. You can, You look at the image and you look at the words... You think of what is in your head yourself. Out of focus. Yes, intentionally out of focus, Greg. Oh, okay. Well, that's the words that come to mind. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. But Ooh, like, that, like wabi, wabi sabi, another Japanese uh, construct. Okay. <laughs> it's the beauty and ugliness. Uh, okay. If that's what you're seeing, then I I'll, I'll, I I can accept that. I, I feel like it's a moment between moments. Well, that's where the waiting comes in. You see, they're waiting and they're waiting, and there's uh you know even the hand gestures sort of in between. There's the anticipatory look. And, okay, guys, uh, I, I get you. Are you are you seeing are you seeing the words? I see a, a knit hat and a knit mitten. No, have you? This is, I waited, not waited, waited. Ah. Uh, so we, say it again. Say your haiku. I waited, again. waited. I couldn't wait anymore. So I left it there. Oh, that's completely different. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's see. What can we say? Uh, I, waited and waited. I waited, I waited, so I left it there. Now, see, that implies that the person is going towards something uh, or looking for something. Uh, are they underwater or are they, uh, are they looking for the boat that they fell off? I mean, you, what, what is the, what's in the idea? In this particular instance, right, the intent is, well, first of all, we're using a haiku type uh, words. So in and, in and of itself, it's from your perspective. So it would never be from mine. So you'd have to think what the words mean to you and marry that with the image. And if, if, you, if, if, if it means nothing or if nothing comes up, that's fine. Hmm. But the idea is to mix the words with the images and have it come with something else that's not just your literal self with the image. Oh, okay. See, I'm using a phone, so I couldn't really read the text between mm -hmm. that and poor eyesight at this moment. Mm -hmm. So I thought you said waited, as in yeah. waiting right. for something. Right. Uh, that's a completely different context. Yes. And haiku, my goodness. Okay. That's like one of my favorite forms of poetry. Okay. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. You know, I, I don't but, get a 
see, the thing is with waiting, I get a sense that we're, that the that they usually wait. People usually wade through something that's viscous, like water or yes, exactly. or or yes. cranberry bog, yes, or or something like that. Yes. Uh, and that they that they're waiting for a uh, a purpose, like they're they're looking for something. Uh, but I don't get a sense that this person is above whatever it is they're waiting. You know, I, I get a sense that they might be underneath it if you use that particular verb. And so, you know, I, it, it's it's a little. Uh, a little disturbing, actually. <laughs> okay. In what oh, way? Right. I, well, I mean, if, if they've waited and they've waited and they're underwater and they couldn't wait any longer, so they left it there, it could very much well be their life. I mean, they left their whole life on the surface and they've decided, I'm going to move on to another plane. And that would not that would not be. Good so you're saying did she drown? She waited and waited and drowned. Uh, yeah, and invert like you know, on, accidentally, like they attempted to uh, save themselves, but they couldn't wait any longer, so they they left it there. But that that's what it seems like based on the gesture of the person looking upward. Unfortunately, uh, I, I have this image of them waiting because of what I thought I heard initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that seems to have much a much different uh, connotation. Yeah. Right. Right. That, that's totally okay. Because remember, when I married these two together, I had a certain perspective on how they merged. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, the subjective nature of the words and the out-of-focus nature of the image when somebody else reads it or sees it, they're going to come up with something else totally different. Did the uh, did the image? Uh, did you select the image first, or did you select the the words first? Or, or I selected the words first. Okay, and, and so I read you... the image to the words. Okay. So read read the. Can you read the poem again? Yes, I waited, waited. I couldn't wait anymore, so I left it there. Hmm. I can see a Mark's interpretation. You know, you left the life there, or, or the something boat. like, huh? Or the boat. You know, they just swam off. You know, but I, I left, no, but I left it there. That was their choice yeah. to leave. Remember, it said so. I left it there, right? Implying something was left behind. Right. Yeah. No. I, okay. I, I get that. Okay. All right. So, okay, all right, yeah, because I, I, mean, I don't want to. If you want, if you're going to get really mystical about it, you could say that uh, they waited and waited through uh, their uh, anger, and then they left it there, and they just went on to a happier life. I mean, you could do that. That's ex that's beautiful, Mark. Beautiful interpretation. Wonderful. Oh, oh wait, wait, um, wait. again. That's his interpretation, and I'm saying it's a beautiful interpretation. Oh, I'm not I saying that it refers to what I thought it was, oh, but I okay. think his interpretation, because what he gets from it, is beautiful. Okay. It's it's basically if he's on this plane, and I was when I created it, I'm on that plane. We're we're on the same plane in terms of thought, uh, not necessarily merging at the same thing, but you know, subjectively thinking similar similar ways. Do they, do they serve uh, pretzels or almonds on that plane? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess what I'm asking at this point, I'm kind of uh, uh, not saying it, but what, what, is, what was your intention <laughs> for, for uh, this uh, particular merging of image and word? Well, if you know my history with what I've been shooting, right, and crowds and people, yeah, I was going to mention that. I was going to say she she's wading through people, you know, the masses of people. That she's had enough of it, so she got up out of there. But go ahead. No, no, I, I. That's why I don't want to interpret. Have I don't want to interpret it for you. I want you to get from it whatever you get. Yeah, well, that would be my interpretation. Okay. She's wading and wading through, you know, the sea of people, you know. 
And mm-hmm. uh, well, it's either either she's committed to to the waiting, you know, like our morning and evening rush hour commute, and then uh, it's her stop and she's getting off, so she left. She leaves it there until the next time, or she's waited so long that uh, she said enough. And she like moved to the burbs, so she left it there. Mm-hmm. Right. So, so what what you're what you're challenging is the the assumption <laughs> that the blurb has a real concrete uh, interpretation, a literal, a literal, a literal con, 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 literal interpretation of what's going on in the image. Thank you, Greg. Right. And so you're, right. so you're so in this particular scenario, you're challenging that idea. Yeah, because I, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not saying I'm not saying it is, and I'm not saying it isn't about the what you see in the photograph, mm-hmm. right? But, but the choice that it's uh, out of focus says a lot too. So I mean, you can't right, right say because that. it's to remove the literal nature of what you might assume. Ooh, sorry. Right, but if I if I were to, if I were to be very obtuse about this, I could say, oh well, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. What does it mean? Okay. You right. Know, the the presumption is is that as a person who you know sees themselves as a visual communicator, I'm going to make some assumptions and supply answers that may not necessarily be the same ones you came up with. Right. But the idea is that I'm going to come up with answers, and you're perfectly okay with whatever answers I come up with. But if I but if I'm not initiated in the language of art and what it what I'm supposed to get out of it, and I just look at it uh, and say. Okay, I don't get it. Does that mean I'm uh, a Luddite, or does that mean that I'm truly understanding no. that you you have no intention of linking them together, other than juxtaposing them in one one frame? I think you're a Luddite. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know that goes without saying. But let's let's suppose ha, I didn't. Uh, you know, I had yeah, no idea. Let's begin that. with that with that Luddite. Do you like that word? <laughs> I would not, um, <coughs> it, it, right, so in this practice here, if someone were to ask me, what does it all mean, if that's what you're getting at, I would yes. not tell them what it means. And, well, if it they mean have, and, they, and if they have no interest in finding out mm-hmm. the relationship or the words, then that's fine. Right. But what but does it there mean are people, to there, there would be people who might. Right? right, depending on who presented the images and the words to them. Right, but what does it mean to you as an artist? I, um, it means well. I without telling you what the words mean to me in relationship to the image, because I don't want to. Well, that is it. actually my question. Yeah. What, what you know? So you you set up a mystery at this point. It's, it's like, not okay. a mystery. It's not a mystery because it's what it means to me. But it's not what it means to you or Greg. So therefore, me telling you what it means to me dis- disavows what it means to you. No, it doesn't. No, it does it. It does. Because no, it then, does you, it. then you have a concrete answer about what it means to me. Right, but it, but it's that, sort of clouds, mm-hmm. it, 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 it already intersects and interrupts right. your visual, your, your reaction to it and your response to it. No, it doesn't. Or it informs it. Um, and I get I get a secondary understanding. Yeah. Well, of it. I'm going to go with the idea of not telling you what it means to me, so that I will not cloud anything, any assumptions on my part that you might be clouded by what that what what by what my thoughts are, and that's mm. and basically yeah, but, saying, that is what I would do if I presented this uh, in in a in a gallery setting or anything. I would not explain it. Uh, well, I mean that's one way of doing it. I mean, I I think like for I, you. Yeah. I mean, if that's I, what it means to you. I mean, because uh, let's put it right. If you were to read the words, would you really need to be be told what the words mean? Not necessarily what the words mean. I'm sorry, he asked you specifically. Say again? No, I was saying you asked Greg specifically, so I won't answer. Oh, like Greg. What, what did he ask me specifically? If you knew the if you if you knew the understood the words, would you need someone to tell you what the words mean? I mean, not, not the words, but you're talking about a visual medium, you know. And now you could words tell are me, a visual medium, and so is the image. So we're marrying words, two visual mediums words together. Words can be crafted into word word pictures. 
Yes. But a visual, but a painting or a photograph is stands by itself. Now you can say this is what this is, but I'm going to see what I see in it. So you can you can call it blue heaven all you want, you know. But if I see a red devil, or let's 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 not say that. Let I see a red herring. I'm going to say he calls it a blue de blue 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 heaven, but I see a red herring. So, I mean, it wouldn't you, your your interpretation of it is your interpretation of it. Okay, or am I being argumentative? Okay. Oh well, no, I, I see what you're saying because I see what happens. But if you have a series of these. And I have a series of questions about, well, what does this one mean? And mm -hmm. what is this one? And it doesn't necessarily mean anything in particular. But then I ask you, well, what does this mean to you? And what were you, what were you thinking about when you juxtapose these two together? And if you <laughs> tell me that you don't have an answer or... You oh, know, I have an answer. I'm just not going to tell you the answer. Right. It's put in tain and you ask me again, I'll <laughs> tell you the same. <laughs> then I'll... Then I'll find myself eventually saying, well, this this individual is not necessarily respecting me as an inquiring okay. consumer no. of, his, they, of his media. Okay, but consider this. You go into you 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 well, you're browsing the web and you see these this image and these words together, mm -hmm. right? On the web, on your own volition, no one showed, no one sent you there. You just right. saw them. Would you ask the same question? If you saw this in a yeah. gallery, would you ask the same question? If interested enough, I would. I, if the I artist is a, not there, what do you do? I've 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 contacted uh, I've contacted galleries. I've got uh, the historical societies. I've I've contacted uh, organizations or whoever the the web whoever published it. I've asked them questions about what their content. I've done that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. If I was interested enough, I mean, that is the that is the merit of the web is that you can contact people easily through the uh, medium that they're displaying their work through. So, I mean, I understand what you're saying. If I go to a gallery and I saw the show, I would ask the dealer. I would say, you know, uh, what is the artist trying to say with this work, or what do they say? Mm -hmm. And if they tell me, well, it's anything you want. Um, Okay, I'll get that once, but if that if I hear that too much, then I'm not really going to uh, continue to look for that person's work because I feel that um, they are kind of saying, "Well, you know, it's my secret, and I don't want to tell you." I, I think and the I'm part not of, sharing. Right, I'm not sharing. <laughs> I think the point of art is to share. You know, I, I think when people go through various iterations of one theme, whether it's, uh, you know, photographing the same cup over and over again or drawing the same uh, individual over and over again, they're, they're sharing some aspect, some, uh, some visual aspect of that, that, that subject that they feel is intriguing and they want, you to, they want you to see it, you know, and they can tell you, you don't have to agree, but it's nice to understand what that person's seeing so that you can appreciate their work. And they go, you know, like if you told me what I see in this is the, the, uh, the spiritual connection between those verbs, that verb and uh, memory, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And that was your interpretation. I may not see that initially. And I may have had the, the, the interpretations that I felt, I had earlier, I had two or three of them. But, you know, I, I see what they're saying, you know, that, and I'd look for that aspect in more of your work. And that's part of the, the, the you know, becoming a, a patron of the arts is you kind of say, oh, this person speaks to me. But if you're telling me intentionally, I'm not speaking to you, <laughs> that I'm not going to look for your work to speak to me. Yeah. Okay. We can, yeah. And, at what point that we 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 uh, we discussed during the uh, the media or you know the social media aspect of it? Once you put it out there, it it's really not yours anymore. You know, it you have the copyright on it, sure, but it's in the public domain. It, right. It's it's up to interpretation. So you right. can you can be mysterious all you want. People are going to have but their it's, it's not, it's, it's, Wow, you guys are focused on the idea of, of being mysterious. If if I produce these two pieces together, 
it created an emotional reaction for me to produce them, mm -hmm. right? So my investment in marrying the words and the images is emotional. It's not a static, um, disconnect, disconnected set of images with words. The words have meaning for me. The image has meaning for me. Right. Right. But I, but I would. Go ahead. But I, I would get a sense of your brilliance if you told me what the connection was between the two. I don't get a sense of the brilliance in selecting those words in that image if you don't tell me. And more importantly, if you tell me, I'm not going to tell you. No, I, I, I married I the little... images. I married the two Im the images with the words because I had emotional connection to both. Okay. okay. And to me, they work together. Okay. In the, in okay. the photographic world, it would be difficult. Like, like I'm having a difficulty getting past the fact it's out of focus. Because the yes. principle, one of the top principles of photography is its tack sharpness. And yes, that's see, not. And exactly. then it's like, yes. what am I looking at? Why yes. am I looking at this? Here's, here's, a little, here's a little backstory about that. I had to adjust to that the whole day when I was out shooting. Because my intent that whole day was to shoot out of focus. <laughs> Okay, Why? I went out there with the intention of shooting out of focus. My focus was racked at um, two meters. Anything beyond that was out of focus. That was my intent. So whatever I aimed my camera at, it was out of focus. Because that was my intent that day. My intent oh, was to like, challenge like, my visual like, uh, thinking. When kids do a uh, backward day and they do everything backwards, they wear their clothes backwards and walk backwards. Okay. So now that you've challenged your visual thinking, what, what wisdom have you gleaned from that exercise? See, that's that what we're looking not, for. That basically you do not have to be in focus to evoke emotion. Huh? You do not have to be in, the image does not have to be in focus to evoke emotion. Fair enough. The gesture is strong enough to do that. Yeah. All right. We're but, so used to and we're so used to seeing things in, in focus that and that's what I was like one day I was thinking, I said, okay, what if I what if nothing is in focus? Right? And in some of the instances where it's funny because of course I'm a street shooter, so as you see, those are shot on the street. And in some some of the images, there is someone who is two meters away and they're in focus. But I chose not to include that particular image married with this with these words. <laughs> And to say that, yes, it could have been another image married with those words, too. It's not specifically geared to that one, one particular image. You could have used multiple or different images with those words. They would have evoked a different series of thoughts. Because the light, the darks, the out-of-focus, and everything else would have given you a different response. Okay. Okay. I just want to know what yours was. <laughs> yeah. That's, Again, that's all my I mean. response was emotional. That's where it was coming from. All the right. words to me are emotional. The words are, are deeply felt. Right. Because they're, they're, they're my internal words. They're, right. not, um, they're not just words out of, out of, out of the air. Okay. They mean something to me. I wish I knew what that was, but okay. <laughs> He's still not going to tell. I'm not going to tell you. Let's move on to Mark's. Uh, Mark. That's just plain mean. <laughs> Let's just move on to Mark's image. Okay, Mark's image and Mark's words. Or does that cross into stank? <laughs> uh, Mark, you want to read your word? Sure, it's just one. <laughs> Two, yeah. actually. Black excellence. Okay. Uh, yep. Now, okay. I don't know if you guys can see uh, what's on the ring. But uh, this no, is we can't. It says right. Yale University. Does it? Yes, yes it does. Oh. Okay. All right. Now this was this was a photograph that was taken uh, some years ago, uh, and the uh, they asked me to photograph uh, their their son's graduation, and uh, I went there, went to went to Yale to do so. And, and and walked with them through the the whole procession, and uh, we got a lot of great photographs. But I I noticed when I first got there, and he was talking to his friends that he had a class ring, and I said, "Show me the ring." And so he sh held his hand up and showed me the ring, and uh, you know it's very similar to the photograph of 
uh, Muhammad Ali that uh, I think it's Tom Hoker, Hoker, Hopker had done that became the uh, Apple Think Different photo poster. And I, I, I think the idea that African Americans uh, uh, do great things is often swept aside um, and we only see little snippets of it. And I wanted to show a young man who had who had uh, done everything he was supposed to do, and he went he went to Yale and he graduated. I mean, he went on to a different Ivy League school, Great. got a law degree, got a law degree, and he's a lawyer now. But uh, really, really, uh, really something, you know. Okay. Yeah, but and here's the thing about yours, right? Yours is a literal interpretation. Mm-hmm. Right. Meant to be a literal interpretation. Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, based on what you, you said, you said uh, what words, you know, put yes. words to the, to the photo. Yes. Yep. And so uh, when uh, we put this photo up, I said, well, what, what does it mean to me? Okay. And I realized that to me, even when I took it, uh -huh. Even before, I mean, even before I had a notion of the idea of black excellence, because uh -huh. really the, the two words, black excellence, uh -huh. I got it from the recent uh, UCLA uh, gymnast who did a, did a dance routine called black excellence. But to me, this is something that this photo represented when I photographed it, uh, uh, you know, years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, I just, I just felt, feel that there's uh not not enough celebration uh -huh. of this because you now you can see in his face he's like this is you know sort of the beginning of the rest of his life uh -huh. and uh you know you could tell he went through a lot to 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 get to that point and uh you know i know his parents his parents were very proud and he was very proud and uh, and even as an african american a fellow i was very proud of him and and it was just really nice to to see and photograph and so it uh, it showed me some time ago, uh, or let's should just put it this way. I've always felt this way, but allowed me to show that Black Lives Mattered long yeah. before that particular hashtag was uh, created. Okay, all right. So not only is it a little interpretation, it's an emotional response on your part. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Total. Good. Greg, you got any questions for Mark? Uh, black excellence. You don't, you don't. Uh, is that like a wonder twin? Okay, nope, I got nothing. Okay, all right, so we'll move on to your image now and your words, Greg. All right. My, oh yeah, yeah. Come on, bring it on. I wish I, I wish I had thought it more. I would have, I would have said something else. I think I would, I would use something like, uh, like river. Okay, you, you use the word. You know, you speak the word that you use here. Oh man, I can't change it. No, it's there. It's up. Oh man, is it no backseat? Can people see it? No backseat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No back. See, okay, all right. And I just said, uh, you know, the obvious, which was, which was, uh, um, I don't think it was well thought through. I kind of like river better, but um, I just said remembrance. Okay. Was that was that what's up? Is that what's up? That's what's up. Yes, the okay. word remembrance. Yeah. Uh -huh. My my word was remembrance. You know, I mean, it's been a year since. Uh, now, do I have to talk about it, or do I let you guys discuss? If you want to, um, I Go mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty much a literal interpretation as well. So, the uh, image itself, or the the word, the words and the image to itself. It yeah. To, I wanted to change it to uh, something like river. You know. But uh, go ahead. What do you guys think? It's no, it's a literal interpretation. So, coming you coming from a photojournalistic background. This sort yeah. of fits into that. Okay. You know, so what I what I would expect, or what I what it, what I had expected, is what I got, which was an image of a of a of a situation or a a, a day in a life, which you captured, uh, and then you've applied a word to it to enhance the image itself. 
to enhance the literal image itself because yeah. the, the 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 thing the thing that you're focused on is a person of historical context. Okay. And immediate historical context and a very famous person. Yep. World yep. So, yeah. I think it's hard to well you might find some people in some small corner of uh, the world who don't know who this person is, um, but for the most part, I would figure that most people do. Like in the Amazon or the Maybe. deep Congo or something? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, or Brooklyn, well, it's possible. I, I, from, you know. I, I, think, I think part of the fact that the, the gentleman was wearing the red coat and the, the black top hat uh, helps me understand that uh, that Kobe uh, was in the sports industry. It's part of the entertainment industry and in that it's uh, a sad, sad day for that entire industry because one of the great performers uh, of that industry, you know, sports, uh, basketball is gone and that it's not just, uh, you know, just some guy uh, that's famous for a moment, but it's someone who really contributed to um, his profession and uh, to the culture, man, and to the culture, right? Well, entertainment creates culture, and sports create culture. Sports mm -hmm. creates culture. So, uh, I mean, it's weird because I know what I'm what I'm saying sounds like I'm trivializing it, but in actuality, I'm saying that this particular figure helps contextualize his death to really help you understand, you know, where this person fit in the world. You know, he's, he's, he's you know, part of that world. That like the entertainment world. What do you mean that world? Yeah. That, that world where sports and entertainment are, are pretty much, you know, we like to, we see of them as different entities, but in, in all honesty, they are different wings of the same, you know, experience. They're, they're, you know, dude, it's entertainment. Okay. Well, I mean, he was a great athlete, you know, but. Right. Um, and yeah. athleticism. Yeah, right. Professional <laughs> athleticism is entertainment. We pay, we pay money for tickets. We watch broadcasts. We, you know, we buy broadcasts. We buy memorabilia. I mean, it's, it's, it's part of that. And I know it's a, it's a whole separate industry, but it's, it's, you know, they've got sports management. They've got, it's very parallel in many yeah. ways so yeah and so i th i think this particular individual kind of helps marry that idea or reminds me that uh, it's part of the entertainment business yeah yeah well i was i was struck by that uh i mean the the choice to do uh do this i did a version in all black and white but the choice of uh they, them, uh, their media folks, uh, putting up a black and white picture of him. It didn't didn't do him justice to me because he was a colorful character. But then to have uh, this gentleman that I kind of circled like a shark to get this picture, um, you know, top hat, formal, you know, shirt tie, and a just bright red jacket like a M Night Shyamalan. Uh, movie when you see red it means something's going to happen you know it's passionate it's you know the woman in the red dress you know and he's got the flowers and he didn't put them on on any of the they all around the uh staples center were different uh remembrances you know piles and piles of flowers but he carried them around with him you know and he didn't uh put them on until nearly the time he left and um can't believe it's been a year already since uh, um, Kobe passed tragically, but um, you know, here it is, and he's remembered like globally. It's 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 amazing the impact he had on so many people's lives. You know, like people that didn't even know him. You know, just fans. They're they're out there at Staples Center. You know, weeping. You know, and I'm like, wow. You know, he had, had such an impact on these folks' lives. And, uh, man, he's just going to be remembered for a long time. So, you know, I have this gentleman in, in uh, rose-colored glasses, <laughs> in top hat and tails, and 
and uh, I, there, there was just something about the juxtaposition of the two images um, that uh, really worked for me. Okay. You know, I wanted, I could have gotten lower and cropped out all those people, but uh, I kind of liked that that guy had on uh, Kobe's, uh, Kobe's number, and there were just so, there was so much media from everywhere. You know that I that I wanted to include that in it also, so um, when I heard about it, I just you know got in the car and headed down there. I just I just said uh, I missed Shaq. That that was <laughs> that was probably my only not really regret, but it wasn't about Shaq. But um, right, it was uh, quite 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 a quite a day. Now is that uh, is that a beam of sunlight that is illuminating the figure in the front? Is that is that what that is? Yes, that is. It's uh, the sun was around, uh, coming just to the uh, just to the west there, um, just outside Staples, bouncing off a building and such. So that was that's uh, real daylight um, there. I, I don't think that's I don't think it was close enough for it to be any of the media lights. I think that is sunlight. He is actually a a, a good. He calls himself a goodwill ambassador to uh, to the Hollywood area. He's downtown, you know doing the walk of uh, walk of fame and giving directions he said he was a, a mayor of or the unofficial mayor of Hollywood and uh, he did have some p political affiliation but it's mostly a uh, ceremonious that he that he dresses up like that you could still find him downtown or at different events you know uh, different media events in LA he's out there so I thought it was appropriate and, and uh, Kind of touching that he was that he was there, just kind of, you know, um, sharing in the grief and share, sharing stories and uh, you know just being uplifting as he could be, you know, under the uh, difficult circumstances. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's remembrance. Okay, all right. So with that. Um is there anything you, Mark or Greg, uh, want to speak in terms of collectively about the discussion that we had through the last uh, 30, 37 minutes? Yeah, picture paints a thousand. Yeah, I would, Just yeah, let a few thousand. more words. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, 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 think, I think there are so many uh, interesting ways that people are juxtaposing words and, and pictures today. There's a zillion memes going around and you know, before that, we would look at publications that had blurbs underneath, and we took those as literal interpretations mm -hmm. of what was going on in the photo. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said. Uh, I, I just really like to uh, get a sense that everything that's put together uh, has a reason, and that what is that reason? I don't have to agree. They don't have to agree with me, but I'd like to know, you know, like with Greg, yeah. it was nice to know that he put remembrance with this uh particular image and you know it's it's pretty you know linear you know it's pretty linear to go from the photo to the word and back and forth but i i think that that helps me get a better understanding of what that individual was trying to communicate and so uh that's really about it okay yeah and if you're gonna do haiku again yeah mr you better like let us know because i can write some haiku too and then well, throw some pictures up there, but bam! See, right. And when I, I, folks, when I came up with this idea, I told the two guys, I said, listen, you have an image and you can add words. The length of the wording is your choice. Yeah, but and, see, that's like that's like putting a picture up there with a sonnet, man. No, as well. for, me, for me to say it in any other sonnet. way is to tell you what to do. Oh, boy. And that's why I have to be careful about how I tell you it, because I don't want to influence what you say or how you say it. I just said a word. I didn't say put a poem up. I didn't say put a haiku up. I didn't say write a story. I just said words. Right. Your choice, your length. So as to, as, so as I don't influence what you think. Because once I tell you to write a haiku, then you try and write a haiku. So. But I wouldn't want you to do that if not if that's not your intent with uh, words. You, you don't want to you don't want to mimic something else. You just want to do it what's genuine from you. Well, I want to write a haiku now. 
Then, then write a haiku, Greg. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's too late. I can't use it. No, it's not. Do... We can do this again. Okay. We can do All this right. again. Okay. <laughs> All right. And With once that... was a woman from Exeter. Okay. Well, I, got, I gotta say, I gotta say, I gotta say one thing. Last episode, Greg, you had asked me a question about we when I said that we had photographed uh, the photograph of the the dad kissing his child. That in that particular case, it was me and he and the child, and uh, maybe I think his kids were running around, and maybe my kids were running around. The collaboration. But most for the collaboration. Right. But a good number of the photos that you see me post of individuals. Uh, my wife, Faith, is also with me uh, working with uh, some of the younger subjects. I think in that case, she was working with Kayla. I thought I thought should let you know. And then the uh, the other little girl, uh, the mother, was working with me to get the other little girl's photo. So there you go. There so. it is. Okay. Okay. All right. With that, I will um, just say, I'll close in by saying that my intent was to, um, of course, reflect on what we were discussing earlier this week, which was to marry words with images. Um, and I was, we were taught this basically back in back at Pratt because that's where the idea came originally came to mind when we started to study um, uh, using words with images, uh, whether they were photojournalistic or whether they were artistic interpretations of images. That's where it came from, and I haven't done that exercise in a long time. So I figured that this would be a great time to do it. So anyone out there who's uh, never conceived of the idea of putting words to their images, uh, take this as an opportunity to think about it. What words would you use when you accompany with images? Now, again, as Mark mentioned, if you're already doing it with memes and things in social media, then this should be something that's automatic. The question is, how much can you stretch the words that you use? Uh, is it literal? Because as we're seeing, you can be literal, you can be subjective, you can be obtuse, you can be way off the base and just deliver something that drives people somewhere else where you don't intend them to be. But the idea is that you at least begin to use words with images in not just literal ways, but figurative ways as well. Okay, with that. <laughs> you flatter me too much. <laughs> with that, I'll say good night. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Three, Brett, Three Black Brad Grads. I'm Ken Nelson, Greg, uh, Greg Clayhorn, Mark Skinner. We'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good night.